Hello guys, welcome to the second part of solving the theory paper. In the first part, we have completed three questions and we have five questions pending in this paper. Let's move on to the fourth question right away. A supermarket sells many products. Each product has a barcode. Explain how the barcode is read at the supermarket checkout and how the prices of the product is found. So, this is segregated into two topics. You have to write maximum four points from the points which I tell you now. So, barcode is scanned using a barcode reader. And the barcode reader usually shines a red laser or light. The light is reflected back. Since the white lines reflect light and black lines reflect less light, the sensor present in the barcode reader detects the light and different reflections give different binary values. And then microprocessor inter interprets the data. And you have to write maximum three points from database stores the data or barcodes or products or prices. Barcode value or the key transmitted to database searches for barcode value in the database. Then the price is returned or found. This is how the process occurs. The next subdivision is the supermarket stores data using a solid state drive. Explain how SSD stores data. SSD uses transistors or control gates. It can be NAND gate or NOR gate. It also uses flip-flop technology. It has flash storage. Stores data by flashing it onto chips or device. The control of data is happening through the flow of electrons. When data is stored, the transistor is converted from 1 to 0 or from 0 to 1. The next part of this subdivision is one advantage of an SSD rather, rather than a HDD is that it has no moving parts, so it's more durable. State one another advantage of the supermarket using SSD rather than HDD. Usually there are many points, but I would recommend you to remember these three. Faster read or write operation produces less heat and less power consumption. This is the end of the fourth question. Now let's move on to the fifth question. Computers use logic gates. State the single logic gate that produces each truth table. The output for this truth table is 1110. When two ones are present, the output is 0. If either is 1 or neither is 1, the output is 1. So it should be NAND gate. Opposite of AND gate. The operation of NAND gate is when there is 0, 0 or either 1 is 1, the output would be 1. If both is 1, the output would be 0. It is the opposite of AND gate. The next truth table is, the output value for this is 0, 1, 1, 0. So, this is a special gate known as ZOR gate. When two values are the same in the input, the output would be 0. When two values are different, the output would be 1. I hope you can understand the function of this gate. The next truth table is 1, 0, 0, 0 is the output for this. So, it is NOR gate, the opposite of OR gate. The function of NOR gate is when two values are 0, the output would be 1. If either value is 1, the output becomes 0. Moving on to the next subdivision. The next subdivision is, an aeroplane has a warning system that monitors the height of the aeroplane above the ground, whether the aeroplane is ascending or descending, and the speed of the aeroplane. The height is denoted by H, ascending or descending is denoted by A, speed is denoted by S. If the binary value of h is 1, height is less than 500 meters. 
if the binary value of h is 0, height is greater than or equal to 500 meters. If the binary value of a is 1, the aeroplane is ascending or in level flight. If the binary value of a is 0, the aeroplane is descending. If the binary value of s is 1, speed is less than or equal to 470 knots. If it is 0, speed is greater than 470 knots. So the question is, the warning system will produce an output of 1 that will sound an alarm W when either of these conditions apply. Height is less than 500 meters and the aeroplane is descending or the aeroplane is descending and the speed is greater than 470 knots. So the logic gets used in this question is or and and. But this doesn't mean only three logic gates are used. You have to check whether the binary value is 0 or 1 for these criteria and then proceed with the logic circuit. Now I'll explain you how to draw a logic circuit with the help of the marking scheme diagram. Now let's see how to draw the logic circuit. The first criteria is height is less than 500 meters. So now using this data we have to find what is the binary value. The binary value is 1. So there is no change in this criteria. You need, no, need not use any logic gates to alter the binary value. The next criteria is the aeroplane is descending. The aeroplane is descending means the binary value is 0. So you need to use a NOT gate. Then an OR gate comes. Then the criteria is the aeroplane is descending. So we just found aeroplane is descending means 0. So again you need to use a NOT gate. And it's a logic gate used here. Speed is greater than 470 knots. Since the speed is greater than 470 knots, the binary value would be 0. So a NOT gate would be used. So the logic circuit would be like, since the speed is greater than 470 knots, you have to use a NOT gate. So this 0 is converted to 1. In A, a NOT gate is connected since they have told the aeroplane is descending. So a NOT gate is connected. Then this and these are connected using an AND gate. So it would be like A0 and H. Then the S0 is connected to an AND gate with A0 output. These both output are connected as the input to OR gate. This is the symbol for OR gate. So the marking scheme awards you marked like this not a not s h and not a not a and not s final or so if you have all five you get five marks i hope you understand how to draw a logic circuit now let's move on to the next question we are at the end of the paper still three more questions to go the sixth question is, hacking is one type of internet risk used to obtain personal data that is stored on a computer. Explain how a firewall can help prevent hacking. It is prevent hacking, not stop hacking. So, the firewall process is, it monitors incoming or outgoing traffic. If you haven't seen the chapter explanation of security and ethics, you can Check out the description for the link for the video. The firewall allows the setting of criteria or blacklist or whitelist. It blocks access to signals that do not meet the requirement. It sends signal to warn the user that something is going to happen. Then it restricts access to specific applications or block entries by specific ports. The next subdivision is identify and describe two other types of internet risk that are used to obtain personal data. So two other easy internet risk as of me are phishing and farming. The both have the same description but 
a slight alteration. In phishing, a legitimate looking email is sent to the user. So clicking on that email will redirect the user to a bogus website. Whereas in farming, a software is installed on user's computer which redirects to different website. An easy six mark question which you can easily achieve. The seventh question is, Adil has used a high level language to program a mobile application. The first subdivision is, describe what is meant by a high level language. An easy two mark question, high level language makes use of words or closer to human language. It uses English like statements. It is the opposite of low level language. It is machine independent and portable. It needs to be translated or interpreted or compiled to low level for processing by computer. Needs converting to machine code. Let's move on to the next subdivision. A deal user interpreter while developing and testing the application. Ideal uses a compiler when the application is ready to be shared with others. Compare the features of interpreters and compiler. An easy four mark question. They both translate high level language to machine code. This is the sim similarity. They both generate error diagnostics or messages to identify errors. The difference are interpreter translates one line at a time and checks one line and then runs it. But compiler translates whole code in one go. Checks all code and then runs it. The interpreter stops when it meets with an error and then allows you to continue running from where you stop. Compiler provides the list of all errors after it checks. The interpreter does not produce an executable file whereas the compiler produces an executable file. The next subdivision is Adil is considering distribu distributing his application as free software or shareware. Explain the difference between free software or shareware. Free software is distributed with source code, whereas shareware is not distributed with source code. Shareware normally allows a trial period for the end user. Freeware allows modification of the application, whereas shareware cannot be modified. Freeware, free software, I mean, free software is often available free of charge, whereas shareware normally has a charge over a period of time. The next subdivision is, Adil is concerned about his application being plagiarized. Define the term plagiarism. Plagiarism means claiming another person's work as your own. Adil copyrights his application. State why Adil copyrights his application. This is done because to identify legal ownership or to claim ownership or to protect intellectual property. The last question in this forum. Paper. The one human model for a computer system uses the stored program concept. Describe what is meant by the stored program concept. So, in stored program concept, instructions and data stored in the same or main memory. Then, the instruction fetched and executed in order, one after another, in sequence. The fetch execute cycle of a one human model for a computer system uses register and buses. Describe the role of program counter. A two mark question, but don't worry about the lines provided. The answers are simple. It holds the address of the next current instruction. This is all you need to write for a two mark question. Describe the role of the control bus. It carries control signals or carries commands from CPU to components or from devices to CPU. It is used to synchronize the fetch execute cycle. The next subdivision is computers based on the one human model for a computer system use interrupts. Explain why interrupts are needed. Interrupts are needed to identify that the processor's attention is required or to stop the current process which is running. It allows the user to multitask, also allows for efficient processing, to allow for efficient use of the hardware. This is the end of the paper. I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on Code 4. Comment below if you like this video or not. 
more types of these videos coming soon.